Right, so let's do this, uh, let's do the materials on this candle. This is the candle, group open. If you need to know how to do the materials and everything, just look at the earlier tutorial. Sorry, how to build it, just look at the earlier tutorial. Covers that in detail. Uh, so we're just going to bring open the material editor here. And here I've got the other materials which I've already created for this scene. And we're just going to grab a V-Ray material. And I'm going to assign this. And we're going to make this glass. So just double click here, double click on this. Get this reflection. Bring this all the way up. Make this all visible. Uh, I'm just going to copy this. You can just drag and drop. So I just want to copy that white down into refract. Just copy it in there. All right. And I think I want to unlock this reflections here, put us to two. And I know it's going to be hard to see the reflections and everything, but I'm going to turn on reflect on backside and see the difference this makes here. So what this does is if you have a normal object, basically V-Ray calculates the reflections on the front of it. Let's say you have a sofa. So V-Ray calculates all the reflections on the surfaces you see in the render. It doesn't calculate the reflections going on on the back of it, simply because you're not usually going to see those. So there's no point in adding render time on something which you're never going to see in the visual and is going to have hardly any impact on the visual. So by default, this is turned off. Uh, with glass, though, with a pane of glass, you do see reflections. Often you'll see double reflections. And so you'll see a reflection in one side and you'll see a reflection in the other side. So that's where here this makes it so it reflects on both sides of this model. That's what that does. And the other thing I want to do is turn off this effect shadows. Uh, basically, with that on, it means because this is completely refractive, it's going to have no shadow. So it's going to say, okay, there's, it's going to sort of fake, do a fake uh, caustics. And it doesn't really do it that well. It just sort of makes it so there's no shadow in it. And I like to see that shadow. I'd like that to be there. So by turning that off, you make it so the glass actually has a shadow. So I'm leave this IOR as it is. Leave the, all the rest of this as it is. That should be fine for the glass. Actually, I do want to add in one more thing. I want to get a bit of randomness in there. So, okay, I'm going to go to my maps. And I really want a grunge texture coming in here. I think maybe concrete would be good. And again, I don't want to see a lot of detail. I just want to see some. Hey, this will work well. So let's take something like... Okay, that's good. So I'm just going to drag this. It's already seamless. I don't have to worry about it. And if I... Let's just copy this. Oops. I'm just going to make this unrefractive, just so we can see what's going on. And if I press F4, these lines will go away. Okay, so you can see what's going on here. So basically, you know, it's not mapped on the inside, it's not mapped on the top, it's just mapped here. So I'm going to put a UVW map on this, and I'm going to give it a box. And I think I'm going to give it real world scale. And this one, I'm going to just look at this, and I'm just going to give a rough guess like you know to go around here this isn't a big object so I'm just going to say like 50 high and 30 wide use real world scale 30 on the width oh 300 on the width 500 here and you can see what's happening here see here you've got like the same pattern here as there so we can make this cylindrical instead and if I turn off real world scale I can make sure that this cylind cylinder is the right way you know you don't want it to be like that or like this so just make sure that's the right way. Turn on real world scale. And now it's actually wrapping around it. There'll be a seam if you look closely. Like there's a seam right here. And I think that's the only seam in there. So I just have that one seam on one side. So I can live with that. That's cool. And then what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put this into reflective glossiness. Turn down this value on this. I'm going to make this. Let's give it a 10% value. Maybe 20% for fun. Uh, in reality, it'd probably be less than 20%, but I'm just want to get some variation going on in there. So I'm going to click back on this and just drag this, put that back into the refractive slot. All right, so that's my glass. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to show you how to make a real quick uh, and good looking candle material here. So again, we're going to use V-Ray and I'm going to use FastSSS2. By default, this is gray. And you've got a whole lot of presets here, and you can just turn this up to cream. 
and that's going to work pretty nicely and just get that assigned to the object and then we're going to play with these a little bit this will do what I want to a degree and then I'm going to adjust some of the settings here so this the light passes into it more so it looks like a nice candle I'm just going to press F3 just so I can make sure I don't you know if I don't have F3 pressed I can select this and I don't have press F4 you can see oh you've actually selected the glass so I'll often go into F3 just to make sure I have selected the correct item so now we're going to do a wick material on here and I'm going to open the material editor bring this material just assign a blank V-ray material now I don't need to worry too much about this because you're very rarely going to be so close to a wick to actually see it you know this is a one millimeter item and it's not right next to the camera anything next to the camera I'm going to turn on depth of field at the end of the render so you won't be able to see anything so close to the camera there all right let's do a candle wick uh, texture I might just go to string because it is just string isn't it let's just go string texture okay we can put something like that on something like this let's go to textures.com again I seem to like these guys um, Okay, we're going to go string, uh, not really what I was looking for, rope, okay, that kind of works. Let's just see if they have wick, I don't think it would, they will, I don't know, wick, oh it's got wicker. But you know, to be honest, you could put something like this on, you know, and it's going to be bet more than good enough. In fact, I really like this one. See, I don't even know what this is, some sort of rattan or something, but I also know that it's going to work. So save that. It says wicker. Okay, I'm just going to put this in here. There we go. Just drag and drop it in here. Put that straight into there. Make this visible. Click on here. Click on here. Make sure rendering generate mapping coordinates real world scale. Just turn on real world scale. And I'm just going to go 10 by 10. In fact, that looks like it's too much. Let's see if I half this. Yeah, that's better. You see it's not seamless? Look here. 3 by 8. 3 by... Let's try 6 by 30 by 20. And let's try and rotate this 90 degrees, see if that's any better. You know, I can actually rotate it like that, so it looks more like string. And even though there's a seam there, I'm not going to bother. You're never going to see it. I don't even think you're going to see this texture, let alone that. All right, that'll work. I don't need to worry about anything else because, as I said, it's such a small item. I mean, if I want to make it completely realistic, I'll probably bring this up to about here. Turn off Fresnel. And you can see the reflections going on there and then just take my reflective glossiness and drop that down to like 0.3 and that's how it actually is just press f4 get the candle get the flame plane selected get another v-ray material assign that to it and i've actually already downloaded these what i did is i went to here and just type in flame there we go so we want something like this. I mean, you can see there's lots of flames here that you could use for various reasons. But this is great. If I click on this guy, it's actually got five flames. And you can see I've already downloaded a bunch of these. I mean, look, this one here is very slightly different to this one, but almost unnoticeably. So that's why I didn't download this one and this one. So I downloaded these four. And I believe they're right here. Textures, flame, here we go. Okay, so we take these four flames, and I'm just going to put these flames where I need them to be. I'm going to put them in here again. Paste. Okay, so I've got my four flames. I'm probably not going to use all four of them, um, but I'll probably use at least two. And you don't have to get them from there. You can just Google candle flame. I'm sure you'll find lots of images you can use. Okay, so let's assign this and make it visible. And then what I'm going to do is, instead of, you know, working out how to put it on a UV and working with it, I'm just going to work here. 
doing cropping, apply, view image. And like this, I can see what I'm doing. I can just come down. I kind of want a bit of space here because you can see that's coming out like this. Oops. And we're going to go like that. And move this up. I don't want that bottom bit in there. But that's pretty nice. And I'll show you a little trick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this straight into self loom and I'm also going to plug it straight into Opacity. And basically, it's all the black bits are just going to disappear in Opacity. So you can see that's happened here. But then that's why you also need the background to be black. I'm just going to widen this, bring it down a bit. And I could always take the wick and tweak it up there, but I don't think you're ever going to see it. And that's it. That's the flame. And that's basically the materials for it. I'm now going to do some tests and we're going to add in a light in there as well. So on this candle flame, if we look down here, uh, just come down to self loom and the multiplier is set at 1. So we need to decide what we're going to want this multiplier set at. And we might need to adjust that. But we can test this by... I just came out of isolation. Press Alt W, go into my quad view. Here I've got my camera set up. So I'm going to come in here and open up my render settings. And I've got it set right now at 3000. And I'm just going to make sure this is on uh, view. And I'm just going to open up my view ray frame buffer. Just make sure I've got, I haven't got region selected. Okay. And then just click here and just render this out. And here's a little candle down here. So I'm just going to stop this now. So I'm just going to use this region here. I'm just going to select region. And they get this little guy. And I'm going to set this to 6,000. I'm actually going to do slightly bigger than that because I'm going to test the light in a minute. And I want to see how that light reacts as well. So we're just going to do that. Okay, and the candle flame's a bit too bright. You know, it's just blown out. And we don't really want that, so... We just grab my candle flame and come over here and I'm going to take this multiplier down to 0.5 and you may find you need to go up you know I'm not saying it needs to go down it's just that's what I need in this case so I'm just coming here to make sure that my displacement is off no that's on okay I could do quicker tests still too bright I'm going to take this down to point, point 0.2 now we're starting to get that red glow around the edge, which I really like. I'm going to bring this way down. Stop this. I'm going to bring this way down because I want to see more of this red glow. So let's see, if I come down to zero, 01, like it should be almost off basically. Let's see how that is. I'm expecting it to be gray. Yeah, that's what I expect. It's not liking when I click stop. So let's go back to the multiplier and let's put this at uh, 0.1. I think we had 0.2 before. And we'll probably keep that. I think that white isn't fully white already. But it's nice because we can see the orange and the red glow around the edge here. And that's at 6K, which is what I would do my final render at normally. But you can see here you've got no... Act, like the candle flame's great, but the actual light it's emitting, you, there's no light coming from this. Oops. There we go. And we need light coming out of this. So to handle that, what we do is just come up here, go top view, Z, F3, so I can see. Okay. And I'm just going to come along here and I'm going to create a light. And we're going to go V-Ray light and just click on V-Ray light. Come in here. And it's going to be small, actually. It's going to be probably smaller than this. So I'm just going to go front view, just to get this into the right place. Bring it up. We know this represents the candle here. So we're going to put it roughly where the candle is, about there. We're going to make this a sphere. And this is the radius here. So we'll leave it at that for now. And we're going to go options. Make it invisible, make sure it doesn't affect reflections, doesn't affect specular. All right. 
and then we're going to change the color this is set to color this is set at 30 30 i imagine is too bright and we're going to really make this you know we can go red or we can go an orange sometimes you do two of them one red and one yellow but we're just going to do an orange for now and we can do another you know some candles we can do maybe like two slightly different colors and if i just press f9 it's just going to re-render this and you can see that's way too bright so I'm just going to stop that there, bring this down, let's try three. But you can get the idea of what we're trying to do. And that's looking pretty nice. So I'm going to stop that. I like the color. And let's drop this down, let's try two. And that orange has changed slightly from a second ago. Yeah. I'm just going to desaturate this a bit. I don't really like it so much, not as much as I thought. Okay, try again. All right, I like that. So now you can see though, you know, this wax, you can see the lights coming in a little bit and we need the light to come in a lot. So if I open a material editor, and this is the candle wax. So we've just put, I've just put cream. You can go milk if you want. But I like to use this. And, you know, we can go into fast SSS material and go into all of the different settings and how to use these. But for now, we're just going to go find an easy way to do it. Okay, so let's look at fast SSS2. Okay, so here it says, scatter controls the depths of scattering by multiplying the scatter radius. This can be used when your scene was not modeled to scale. The default value of 1 means the scatter radius is used as it is. For example, to render a 1 to 10 scale model, set the scale to 0.10. So we're just going to use this and we're going to come to the scale and if I put this at 10 and then render, you can see more lights passing in into the candle. So we can stop that there. Let's try this at 20. Press escape. I'm just showing a quick way to do this without having to go into all of the details of the material. How you can get it to, to do what you want it to do, you know? All right, now I have a feeling even if I put this up at 100 here, I don't think it's going to make a big difference. Well, you can see now lights coming all the way down, but it's not coming in very brightly. And we don't want it coming in all the way down, all the way down there really. So I'm just going to stop this. Let's try 30. If you wanted, you could use a V-Ray blend, but it's going to end up taking a long time to render. That's not really doing what I want. It looks like lights bouncing off the wall back onto it. It doesn't look like it's doing what we really want it to do. So I'd say 15 or 20 is about as high as we want to go on that scale. We want it to look like that light is coming down and at 10 or 15 it does. It looks like the light's passing through here, passing down. So let's stop that. We can come back here to the fast SSS2. We can have a look at the scatter radius here. So scatter radius controls the depth of scattering light inside a material for both color modes. That's here, subsurface color and scatter radius or scatter coefficient and fog color. So it's talking about these different modes. But the point is, as it controls the depth of scattering light. Smaller values cause the material to have shallower layer of scattered light and to be more diffuse like. Higher values define a deeper layer where the material scatters light and makes it look more translucent. All right. So let's say we take this. This is another way. You put this back to one. And we come in here. And we go scatter radius. And this is set at two. And it's set in centimeters. So let's say if we set this at 20 and then render, we have a similar result, you see, as opposed to 2, which was the default, which is what we had originally, where it looks quite hard and there's not a lot of light. You can see it passing in, but it doesn't really look like it's passing in very much. And if I put this up at 100, I believe we're back to where we were before. So it has a similar result. The scale is just multiplying this. So if we leave that at one, the other way to do it is to come in here and do this. And that's set at 100 centimeters. And there's no reason to have this at a meter. That's only like 20 centimeters high. So if we set that back at 20, it's going to give us sort of what we want there. And we'll just do a quick test. 